Hi, I am Multitopic Talk. Welcome to this new video about the Arrowverse. So you can subscribe to the channel for more content. You can also join our Discord uh, in the description below. So with that being said, uh, this video is about Black Lightning. And we will answer the question, was Black Lightning TV show any good? I did the same with Supergirl, I plan on doing the same with Arrow, and I plan on doing the same with Marvel TV show eventually as well. So with everything being said, let's start off. This is my opinion. That's it, this is my opinion. This is my take on, is Black Lightning any good? And after... Me speaking about all four season, the good, the bads, what I enjoyed, what felt off. We will go take a look to uh, Rotten Tomato uh, score, not the critics, the people like you, like me, like your neighbor. We will see what the audience had to say. And yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy. Let's do this. So, Blind Lightning Season 1 was very interesting. Uh, it was a weak Season 1, in my own opinion. Yes, I, say, I, I said it was interesting, but it's not the strongest uh, for season. Usually, when you take a look to TV shows, the season one is the best, usually. Uh, I have some exception in my mind, but usually season one I have a lot of ideas and the story is amazing and there's no filler or anything. Now with this first season we got with Black Lightning, that was a good foundation for the show, but I felt like it was poorly executed. The writing may be great, the story may have good ideas in it, but I felt like season one is easy to forget, because it's a weak season. Then season two is better, but it still adds, it still add a few flaws. But now let's focus on season one. We got to buy us a gangster. Uh, he wants to rise in the ranks of uh, the 100. If I remember correctly, it's been a while I watched season one. It's been a few weeks, but I've watched so much stuff in the past few weeks that I don't really remember exactly. But regardless, Tobias want more power because he does not have enough power. Tobias killed. Uh, Jefferson Pierce's parents, or we should say dad, because we never really met Jefferson's mom. And yeah, Jefferson Pierce is our main character. He is Black Lightning. He did retire a few years ago because his wife Lynn asked him to stop being Black Lightning. And Lynn blamed Black Lightning for the failure of their marriage when it was deeper than that and when there, there was other issues with their marriage as a whole. Now, season one, we get Thunder, uh, Anissa, older uh, daughter of Jefferson, getting her powers and Jennifer as well, but Jennifer they start much later in season one. Anissa Thunder get her power first and she keep said powers hidden from Jefferson. And at some point they clash because they don't know they are uh, the same family and they only thought they were enemies. And yeah, the idea is interesting. I like it a lot. Uh, season 1 is a, is really the foundation of the show, and you forget about that. 
because it's not a flashy superhero TV show. In Black Lightning, you don't get that much Black Lightning. The only thing I truly remember is the downfall of Khalil, um, Jennifer boyfriend. Um, he, he starts great at the start of the season and he's friend with Jennifer and then they start a relationship and then they go to a protest and that protest leads to Khalil uh, getting his uh, spine severed in some ways so he is no more able to walk and then this is the downfall he's always at the hospital because he cannot walk uh, he's on surgery and then at some point the bias well the big bad decides to um give some implant to Olo Khalil to walk here again great idea the villain manipulating someone darkness to turn someone evil and he succeeded because once Khalil accepted the bias help he also ex accepted everything Tobias was telling him. So, because of Tobias, Khalil turned a veil. And that was interesting because he was a good boy, made bad choices. I like it. But, here's the thing. Uh, this is a subplot. Because we got the game war, um... Black Lightning coming back, putting criminals behind bars. There's a lot going on in season one, and nothing stands out. Nothing feels unique. As I said, the only thing I remember from season one is Khalil Downfall. And I remember so much more about, for example, the Flash first season of, or Arrow first season. And the Flash and Arrow, it's been so long, I watched both, that it, it's it's unique. Because Blind Lightning, I watched it a month ago, I started re-watching the series. Maybe a bit more, maybe two, let's say two months ago. Two months ago, I, I re-watched everything about Blind Lightning. And I, I still cannot really white out like my notes. On top of my head, I cannot really remember much. And I remember even Supergirl first season, because it was atrocious to watch. But you see, Blind Lightning is, was not atrocious. The first season was good, it was well done. As I said, the writing is good. But I feel like there's nothing that stands out, it's just another show. And another issue I had over all four seasons, the lack of Black Lightning in Black Lightning. Now, Season 4 had some good reason in some ways, so I gave it a pass, but in Season 3, 2, and 1, this show should be about him. He should suit up more. He should use his power more. But I feel like you see Thunder and Lightning as much as you see Jeff in a suit and they are side character they are supporting character they are not the lead and more than that season three i remember much more jennifer in her suit than jefferson in his suit and for me that's an issue now with that being said season one as i said you forget about that. It's mediocre at best because the action is interesting, but it feels not as good as Daredevil or Arrow, for example, because it's a street fight a show like it's a vigilante and fight choreography should be amazing, but Black Lightning feels behind Arrow and Daredevil. Arrow and Daredevil are well done. The fight choreography is amazing. Black Lightning, it's not as bad as Batwoman, or not as bad as The Flash or the other shows, 
but it's not the strength of the show. It, the strength of Blind Lightning is not the action. And that's fine. Maybe it's just not for me, because maybe the show is too mature for me. But you see, Daredevil is more mature, in my own opinion. It's darker and it's more realistic. And I enjoyed a lot of Daredevil. So maybe it's just there's something I, I don't understand with Black Lightning in the first season. Now, season two, it was better than one. But the same issues came back in season two. All my issues I had in season one came back in season two. And this is very sad. Now, I remember one thing about season two. And I watched it after watching season one. So it's even more fresh in my mind. And I remember two things. Khalil dying because he betrayed uh, Tobias by doing the right choice. And the second one, Jennifer running away from home with Khalil because she's pissed off. Because her parents control too much her life. And she's fed up with that. It's the only two things I remember from season 2. And this is sad because we got 16 episodes. So there is much more content. But that's the only few stuff I remember. And this is very sad. Maybe it's because I only watched the series twice. Once uh, when... The series started in 2018, I was watching weekly. Season 2, I was watching weekly until they took a break. And then I waited until they finished the season. So I watched me on my on my first watch of season 2. I decided, oh, you know what, I, I watched like 6, 7 episodes out of 16. And then I waited until the entire season was done. And my second wa watch was recently. And when you binge watch, it's easier to swallow. The pill is better. But you see, when I was saying the season one was mediocre at best, I feel like season two is average at best. It's better than one, but the same issue sticks. So maybe I believe it's average because I'm getting used to it. I, I don't know. Now, here's the catch. Season 3 was amazing. One of the best TV shows I've seen is Season 3 of Black Lightning. Season 3 was a masterpiece. Yes, it had a few flaws. Yes, it was not perfect. But even if I don't get that much Black Lightning... I get Jennifer, I get Thunder, Lightning, uh, I get Grace, I get other meta-human, I get some action. There's a war in, in going in free land. This is unique. The story was great. And I feel like if you did not like season 3, I don't know what you can like. Because season 3, yes, it's not your typical superhero TV show. It's not um, all flashy all the time. It's really dark. But it's interesting. The writing is well done. Odell manipulating Jennifer to uh, attack the Markovian. Because the, Markovia, the Markovian people wants to enter in war with Freeland. The ASA uh, is in war with Markovia. It's it's basically Markovia wants meta human. ASA wants meta human as a response, and the entire plot is who we'll get the most powerful army to take the other one down. This is interesting, and ASA is government like, so they control. The city of Freeland, they send in camps, uh, meta human, and now population 
people from Freeland are not happy, they are pissed off. The ASC cut communication, so it's like a war zone, basically. And this is crazy. Season 3 is good. Then you get Lynn's storyline. Lynn, I cannot stand her. Season 1, I wanted to kill Lynn each time she was on stream. Because most of the time in Season 1, Lynn was here to piss off Jeff or to blame Jeff for something. They were always arguing. They were always against each other. So how can you make me enjoy Lynn if all she does is pissing off Jefferson. Jefferson is our main character. I cannot stand Lynn in season 1. Season 2, she was fine. Maybe they realized they made Lynn really dirty in season 1, so they fixed it in season 2. But in season 3, Lynn has an actual storyline where she she wants to help the, the meta humans just like in season two but there's a big difference now it's wartime and she becomes a drug addict she she is drugged with green light to become more intelligent more smart and have better work i guess and she's also drugged by her job she barely sleeps, she just go out at work because work became her life. And this is interesting. I can relate. Even if I'm not a scientist, I can relate what she's living through. Much more than in season two or one. One, forget it. I cannot stand Lynn in season one. In season two, Lynn, Jefferson's wife, in case you don't know, as good things she wants to help pod kids she lose a few she's sad she's broken but that was it with lynn in season two and lynn season three you can feel there's a lot of heat on on lynn and you see in season two jefferson came closer with anderson because Anderson found out Jefferson is by lightning. So there are some kind of trust issues. And their friendship is still there. But the trust is a bit in pieces. And this, this was interesting in season two. Anderson Jefferson dynamic was great. In season three. It's even better because they work that much more and you realize Anderson want to save Freeland at any cost. He's willing to to put a bomb under cars of the AC. And Jefferson is just like, uh, yeah, I, I will disable these. So Yes, the army are extremists, but among the resistance, extremist people are also there. And this is amazing. This is very political, but this is well done. They don't smash down your throat. What you need to think about that. They let the viewer think for themselves. You give the viewer your story and your politic, you give both sides of the coin to the viewer, and the viewer can choose, am I right, am I left? And this is what makes it so good, so smart. So the writing is good. And at some point, uh, I'm like, my issue with season three are the generals uh, under Odell. They are so one-dimensional, they are so annoying, but I think they were made this way because they were made this way. Not because it's an accident, they were made this way. And when you realize one of the soldiers 
realized they kill innocent people and now he turns his back on the ASA. This is wow. This is wow. This is good TV. Now in season four, I'm really divided. We had Tobias in season one and two. He is back again. Now you see he was there in season three, but it was a subplot among the subplots. He was not the villain. Yes, he was a villain. Yes, he used Lin to escape from the jail where he was. But he was side character from side character. I remember in season three, many episodes there was no Tobias at all, or only one scene, or only two scenes with Tobias. And it was where it was here and there. You can almost forget Tobias was in season three. And this is fine. We had other villain. Odell was a villain. Grave Digger was another villain. I didn't spoke a lot about Great Digger because it was more like an endgame villain. And I also feel like the show wanted to do five season and keep Grave Digger Grave Digger for the final season. But then uh season four turned out to be the last. Not because it was cancelled, it was not cancelled. The the show decided to end with four. But I believe what forced the show to take such decision was probably drama behind the scene. This is what I think happened. Uh, drama between uh, the actress that played Jennifer and the actor that played um, Jefferson. I believe there was a drama behind the scene between the both of them. So because the actress that played a uh, Jennifer wanted to leave the show. They just said, you know what, we end the show with four. I think this is what happened. But they they plan on doing five. So yes, when they came to season four, they needed to change their plans. But to make it work, they scratched the, some of the ideas they had. They, they threw it uh, in the garbage bin. This is what I suspect. I'm not showrunner. I was not part of the show, so I don't know what happened. But I strongly believe we would have a season five without any drama behind the scene. I'm pretty sure that's the case. So regardless, Grave Digger, it was fine. It was interesting. Uh, here again, it was part of that politic aspect. Um, he wanted revenge as well, and this was interesting. Now, my issue with season four, it's not the start, it's the middle and the end. The start was amazing. Because you see, spoiler alert, I already spoiled a few plot points in, in, um, throughout the show. In season four, no, season three. Season three. At the end of season three, Anderson dies. And in season four, you see a broken Jefferson. He lost his best friend. He considered Anderson as being his brother. So he lost his brother. And Jefferson is not the only broken piece in there. Lynn as well. She's still a dry addict. Their couple is broken. They do a, a therapy, couple therapy. Uh, Anissa is also broken because Grace is in a coma since the war in season three. Uh, uh, even um, Jennifer is broken because her parents are just no more there for her. She In season 3, she was almost on her own. And then in season 4 as well. So for like almost two years, Jennifer was almost alone. 
So as a teenager, it's normal she will break. She was alone. Everyone is broken in the Pierce family. And we get Gambi that tries to put back the pieces together. This was great. I enjoyed that part. Now, here's one of the issue I have. Because Jeff was broken, he did act off character so much. And here's my issue. Maybe you plan on making him acting off character to tell how broken he is. That could make sense at some extent. But it's been a year since Anderson died. And now you're telling me Jeff decided to become a street dog. He sent in, into coma two policemen that were racist and dumb. And not just that, near his car. So he's under investigation. Now, you can act off character. But this is so bad. And the fact that he was able to escape that and not go on trial because they had a, not a solid case, but they could have had a solid case against Jefferson if they wanted. Because having a partial plate and Jefferson telling he was there at the same time. He should be your suspect number one. And I feel like as the season progress, uh, that just fades away. Now, the other time where Jefferson feels off character in so many levels, he uh, decide to go on a tug house with all the suits. And he, he destroyed one of the, the criminals because he shot a kid. And he does the same again to another thug because he shot Jennifer. Now, I think the fact that Black Lightning is not coming back when his daughter are in danger tells us enough about how Jefferson is broken. You don't need to do him some stupid stuff because Jefferson is not stupid. He's all about self-control. And now he loses his best friend and one year later he, he breaks apart and he is no more thinking about anything. So as much as I like the idea of broken Jefferson, I really don't like how he was off character for so long. The first three episodes, that they went too far with, with how broken Jefferson was. Because I, I felt like I was watching another show, not Black Lightning. And I felt like that was not Jefferson. Now, maybe that was the plan of the writers. Maybe, but it's not executed the way I, I enjoy it. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's perfect. It's just my take, just my own opinion. Now, uh, my biggest issue with season four, the bias is back. If I were the showrunner, the writer, whatever. Tobias, season one. Okay. Season two, with the Khalil stuff. Okay, because it's a follow up of season one. But end is story there. Now, season four. He was just there because they were all the villain, I guess, or because they wanted to use again the actor. Because the actor is good. 
don't get me wrong there. The actor is good. My issue is the fact that Tobias is boring. He's just that guy that, that do villain stuff because he's a villain. And he is not as interesting as before. Because you see, before, he was taking the darkness inside people and he was turning people villains. That was his thing. Now, he is a clown that do a sketchy stuff under the table while all people noticing. And he's running for mayor. Did people forgot he was in jail? Did people forgot he killed people? Did people forgot he was the crime lord? Oh yeah. We don't ask where that money is coming from, right? Don't ask. Now, Lala was good, but he was a side character, and then he was placed in the bench by the other lady from the other gang. Once Black Lightning is back, it was very interesting. Um, the overall idea of Season 4 was good, but it was not executed the way I, I like it. You see... Uh, we got Painkiller back. Painkiller was created in Season 3. Uh, it's basically Kalil coming back to life. And with superpowers, he can uh, send a venom through uh, the uh, blood of people. And this is interesting. He's also a super ninja that knows all martial arts. And I like that. You see, each fight scene with Painkiller was wow. It was among the best, side by side with Arrow and Daredevil. But you see, this took them two season of misstep, and then a third season of good stuff, and a fourth season of great stuff. So you see, season four, it was better than one and two, because I remember clearly. Even after my my first watch when it came out, I still remembered it, and I find it average at best. But the big plot points I remember them because the actual story was interesting. Lin still being a drug addict. Uh, now it's the hit and miss. You see. It's not as good as during season 3, because we already seen it in Black Lightning, and now Jennifer lives the same experience. So, you see, that was good, but that was not as good as season 3. And Tobias is really my issue with that season, because Anderson friend uh Shakur I believe you see I'm, I'm not sure of the name of the guy that tells you a lot you see Shakur is a great character but then you got the police chief I cannot stand her I can't this is a bad leader she should not be chief now here's the why she forced Shakur to be part of the anti-meta-human task Force. Don't you think when someone don't want it, he won't really give his 100%? So why do you give it to him? You did best for the job, so I force, I force you to get the job. I don't want to do it, but you will get it. Okay, whatever. I'm rolling my eyes right now. The police chief is one dimensional. She's boring. She's a bad leader. She has a grudge against Meta Human. And she 
she goes on her own vendetta against Meta Human. And when she does something wrong, like when they were trying to protect the mayor, she blames the, the Meta Human that tried to save the mayor that got shot by Tobias. Now, you see the magnetic guy, uh, the uh, new Tobias friend, was interesting. Uh, I enjoyed him a lot. But Tobias is my issue. Chief of the Police is my issue. Jefferson, start of the season, acting off character. There are so many bad stuff. But it's entertaining and. I feel like even if we had a lack of black, black Lightning in that season, I feel like Black Lightning was still much more there than in the previous season. And another very interesting character was that uh, Meta Human Killer. His fights were good, I liked them a lot, uh, especially the one with Painkiller. That was an amazing fight. And Painkiller is there, he is still the show. Really, I'm so sad the Painkiller spin-off uh, got cancelled. I was looking forward to see it. Now, in my own opinion, was Black Lightning any good? Yes. Despite my the flaws, I believe in my own opinion it was good. The writing is on point. The execution had some issue here and there. And season 4 was good, but I had issue with it. But it was still good. I enjoyed re-watching the show. I was not like, oh, another episode. I will be bored. I need to watch for my video. No. I was watching because I was invested and I was interested to see more. So now let's go see comments the other people had. Now let's read uh, the rest of the comments as I mentioned earlier in the video. Uh, as you can see, uh, critics. Uh, most likely like it. Most of the time critics like the stuff. Except if it's Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop is really disliked by everyone. Why this thing exists. Anyway. Audience tells us 54% out of 2000 users. Okay, let's read my comment. Um, I always remembered this season as being mediocre at best. I was wrong. My most recent watch of the show changed my mind or was more accurate to the true quality of the show. The first half of the season was very slow and sometimes hard to watch, but the back half was great. Outside of one episode where Jefferson Pierce himself is getting framed, corrupt cops are cliche and the story went too fast and it wasn't realistic on all a show that tries its best to stay grounded on a world where we have meta-human. So you see, the same thing happened in season 4. And now, this time, it's not Jefferson that goes in jail, it's Lynn. So, I forgot to mention that, uh, but yeah, this part of the story, I was not a fan of it at all. Uh, corrupt cops, always atrocious to see, it's cliche, I don't like that. Um, usually, when you want to be a cop, you don't get that corrupt so easily i mean here's some money do that and i i speak that i'm not a cop myself but i am a former uh, security agent uh right now i'm i'm 
working on a call center, but I did security for four years. And as a civilian with some kind of powers, even if someone gave me money to let them do some stuff, I would never do that. Because it's dumb. You wear a uniform, respect it. Anyway, this is my own opinion. Not everyone is like me, but I know most people should be like that if you wear a uniform. And corrupt cop should be like easy to put behind bars, I mean. Anyway, Lynn started off as being one of the most annoying female characters in the Arrowverse, and by the end of the season, she's much more interesting, and she got more than only one dimension. The show is well written for the most of it. The weakness relies on its lacks of action and moments we can remember. I did watch the season as it came out, but I never really felt the need to go back and watch again until I decided to cover the show on my YouTube channel. As I was watching on my second watch, I felt like I was watching for the first time a few episodes since nothing really stands out. The show is average but easy to forget since nothing is really unique about the show. The bias will have charisma but he is not the best villain of all. He is very one dimensional and sometimes he is hard to take seriously because he speaks and acts like a comic book character. People keep coming back from the dead leaving the viewer not feeling any tension anymore. Music and fights are both really good, actors are good, writers are good despite some flaws here and there. Rough start if you expect flashy action and flashy power each single week. You won't have that all the time. We won't go on all uh, comments uh, like this one because there's too many. We will just read the first few lines. The show could have been great, but as typical with the CW, they put too much political woke propaganda in it. I don't agree with that. Um, you just don't like representation or diversity. Um, as I was watching, I, I knew they were speaking about black people, black life matter and stuff like that. But... That was not woke, that was not propaganda, that was interesting, and it was in the background, that was a subplot. The main plot is Black Lightning and Tobias fight uh, like against each other, I mean. That was the plot, that was not woke propaganda, no. My friend was telling me it was good and after the show first year, I sat down and watched it and it was okay. I understand. This show had some potential, but what totally turned me off was that Black Lightning and his wife are absolute asshole parent would behave like their teenager daughter. Okay, um, don't judge other parents, even if you are a parent. Uh, first of all, this is TV. Second, each kids are different. And third, you are not always right. If you are uh, bad par a, a bad uh, if guys are bad parents, your kid won't end well. And the intention of the writer were to make flawed human beings. But that doesn't mean they made bad parents. Uh, I'm not a parent myself, but I studied self-care counseling. And I can tell they are not perfect, but they are not asshole parents like the person says they are. This is wrong. Um, no. It's not because they act uh, a certain way with their child that it's wrong. Everyone is different. 
very possibly the worst TV show ever made. A dreadful acting, terrible fight scene. Woof, 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 woof. Okay. Uh, don't agree with that. Do we watch the same episode? This is bad and disconnected that I lost interest in first two episodes. But I pushed to the end and I can say it's no good. Uh, as I said, if you expect flashy action, you won't like it. If you want a all-black cast superhero show, this is your only opinion. That is its only strength. Okay, next one. I don't agree with you at all. Writing is amazing. You're just racist. Season 1 does a perfect job in establishing the show. The writers are more worried. Okay. Now, here's my take. It's 54% because people are racist. Now, it's not a 96 either. I think season 1 should be around uh, 70, maybe 75. Somewhere like that. I mean, season 1 was okay. Uh, but this is my take on it. Um, if you're a racist, don't watch this show. You won't enjoy it. Now go to season two. Forty six, it's lower than one. Now I don't really get it. I find uh, season two a bit better than one. It still has a lot of flaws, but it's better than one. Now, here's my comment. I always remembered season 2 being mediocre at best. I was wrong. Upon my second watch, it was much... It was better than what I remembered. The start of the season is very slow. Season 2 is the improved version of season 1. Season 2 had among the best episodes in the entire season... Uh, series. Sorry, series. Sometimes you can feel agenda being pushed, but it's still done the proper way. Agenda are there to support character and build them better. Tobias is a very good villain, but I felt like he was overused. Once the Kaliel storyline over, he should have been removed from the show, letting the Markovian taking over as the villain. Lynn was much better in season 2 than 1. And she was part of the main story, and she didn't feel disconnected. Uh, yeah. O'Donnell. Oh, it's O'Dell. <laughs> O'Dell is another cliche villain, sadly. He is one-dimensional, and when you believe he's changing, you are wrong. He is just playing the long game, and he's just manipulating Ling Gambi. Uh, was amazing as usual. One of my issue would be the fact that nobody stays dead. Lala come back. Painkillers plan on coming back. This season is the average season of the Arrowverse. Khalil Jen running away from Freeland was interesting. The school storyline was interesting. Jefferson is a great lead for the show. Shadow Bird. Good idea, liking it. Uh, Jennifer taking the entire season to control her power made sense, and I enjoyed it. So, like, it should Im improve because they did something better, but it's not perfect because it still has flaws. You see, it took me four days to watch season two. I watched it fast for someone who works. 
It's okay something to watch. This show is truly underrated. One of DC's best show definitely shows the divide within the community when unity should be amplified. Bias well is a strong villain, but he is becoming one note. The story is still slow, but deeply interesting. Way overrated. It's not because it's related to the black culture that it's necessarily good. I don't like your comments. No, no, no. Not good at all, I mean. Okay. Um... I guess you're not racist and you just don't like the show. And that's right. You have the right to do that. A wonderful superhero drama for the black community, period. It delivers. Mm, yeah. Great, I'm not quite sure, but... Black Lightning is back for another season after a stressful first run. On the CW TV, first black superhero and the rest of his family. This one uh, is a long analysis of the show. I'm wondering if developer Salim Akil has plan for this show. You know, the kind of plans showrunner have for when and how their shows conclude and therefore do it. This is another very interesting um, point. But now you see more people enjoyed it, at least in the first page. So I really don't understand that really low 46. Maybe it's because less people watched it. Uh, let's go over to season three. Forty-five and season three is a masterpiece. Whatever. I always remembered season three as being the best season the show ever had. I was right. All three chapters were well done and very interesting. Not having to buy us as main villain of the season made this season special since Bias had a big role in the other three seasons the show had. Odell, head of the ASA, is very interesting. I can't say the same for both of his generals. Both generals are just one-dimensional, cliche military people that have the generic goal to save humans by any means necessary. Odell is more interesting since sometimes he does good stuff to gain trust and he is a master of psychology, able to control people with words. Funny thing, he keeps his word. When he says something, he will do it. As usual, one of the weaknesses of the show is the lack of black lightning in it. The Beas being only a side villain made him more interesting. The writing of the show is as good as ever. Military takeover in time of war was very interesting to see in a superhero TV show. It was also well done. Most of the episode in the season felt like a 9 out of 10. Anderson being a double agent was a great storyline. Lynn a drug addiction was a very interesting storyline. Painkiller dealing with his double personality was great. Jennifer asking question if she should work or not with Odell was well done. Knowing how Anderson death affect Black Lightning in season four, rewatching Anderson last words. To Jeff was much more emotional than what it was on my first watch. Grave Digger was too strong, but he was still interesting. Adding Grace was also good. The story was well done and entertaining. It's rare I say that, but 16 episodes was the perfect number it needed to tell the story. 
it was near perfection. The generic general were the reason why the show was dragged down. Lady Eve and Jace were also overused characters that dragged down the show. Now let's read the other comments of other people. This show keeps getting worse. I will give season 4 a try, but I'm just about to call it quits. I don't understand you. Not gonna lie, the villains are tough to love throughout this series, but the writing has gotten significantly better along with some incredible performance. We need good writing when you have the obvious pander tropes. Okay, I don't agree with you. I don't read any more of your comments. Chris William, if it's a William, okay, this one is a long novel about this season. Incredible season and one of the best season in Arrowverse. Incredible story, incredible visual, and incredible action sequence. The new suit for Black Lightning looks good. I'm assuming this is what you're saying. It's boring, maybe I had my hope up hearing how spectacular it was from critics, but I have no idea what they like. This is harsh. That that show is great in season three. Season three is not that bad due to the fact that the actual story is improving all through. The character and other stuff are still not that interesting. It is still the worst TV show of the Arrowverse. I'm assuming you have not watched Legend of Tomorrow. This might be the best season yet, thanks to some. On new characters. Season 3 was the best. This show just keeps getting better and better. Honestly, the best season by far. Amazing villain choices and Agent Odell and Grave Digger, as well as great storyline involving Painkiller. So you see, a lot of people enjoyed it. So I don't understand that 45%. If you don't like a show, don't watch it. I'm saying that, but I'm hypocrite because I don't like Batwoman and I still have hope for future, so maybe, maybe, just maybe. Now it's 55. Not the best season or the worst season this show had. My few issues with this season are the following. The police chief, Tobias Wall as last villain, and the fact that this season didn't felt like the last season of the show. Police chief was lame, boring, atrocious. She is one-dimensional, and we already had police members with the same kind of grudge against Meta. Chief also did many bad leadership decisions. I already said it earlier. The well felt overused. Uh, I believe they planned on doing five seasons, but behind the scene drama forced them to end at four. I think it's out eight out of ten. Uh, Broken Jefferson was amazing. Now I got a very long comment, so yeah, I think I should just read the other ones. You guys know all I feel about season three. It's, it was a masterpiece, season three. And season four was flawed, but interesting. I really like this series. The storyline on its on this season started ropey, but it has improved as it's gone on. Final season for me, the letdown of Jennifer character toward the end of the series. The replacement didn't even come close to how the previous actor played. I don't agree with that. Um, we got Jennifer number two. Uh, 
different actress, same character. This season was much better. My applause go out to the new Jen aka Lightning. She is a much better actress. Mm, they are the same. It seemed rushed. Don't agree with that. A series that came from more to less with an ending that allows it to be expanded. This is true, but sadly it won't happen. It's the fourth and final run. Oh, this one is a novel, I remember. Add potential in the first season, but like the other DC shows on this CW, got boring real quick. Needed at least one more season. True. So, you see, if we just listen to the eight, that was not any good, this series, because all of the season were poorly rated by the audience. Now, here's the catch. Uh, you have seen it yourself. A lot of hate uh, because people pretend this series had an agenda. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, I don't want to watch Og Guy because I know this one has an agenda because Marvel wants agenda. I'll reverse. It depends on the series. Uh, Bad Woman has an agenda. Well... Mainly in season one, season two not really, season three not really, uh, Legends of Tomorrow mm, not really either. You see, this all comes to uh, the opinion people have. Uh, now, question is, was Black Knight any good? For other people, it was not. But a lot of people are racist and they just hate something if it's a black or they will just hate something if it's a woman. Uh, blind lightning had issues as I mentioned. The lack of black lightning and black lightning was really big and you forget about most of the show. Um, as someone that just watched all four seasons, I don't see that much of the agenda uh some episodes here and there add agenda but it's just moments it's not the entire episode they won't tell you uh black people good uh, white people bad they they won't tell you that the entire episode some people will have a debate somewhere but this is natural this is part of real life I don't feel like Politic hijacked the show. I really don't. Maybe a bit more Season 3 because it's more about political stuff. But even there, it was well done. It was done properly and they don't smash agenda down their head or throat. So, yeah. As a series, I think it should deserve more credit. It should be like a... 7 out of 10 series. Um, maybe if I am good with you, 7.5 because season 3 was a masterpiece. But you see, season 1 and 2 are really hard at some point. Um, what is your own opinion? Was Black Lightning any good? Like, comment, and subscribe for more Arrowverse content. Have a great day.